Hi, everybody. It's Rowan Smith with the Mortgage Center. We're going to try something a little different this week, and I'm going to cover something that's very commonly requested of me, which is details on debt servicing. What is it and how to calculate it? So there's two main ratios that the lenders use when they're calculating debt servicing. The first is GDS for gross debt service, and the second is TDS for total debt service. Gross debt service, or GDS, which is the first ratio we look at, includes your principal, interest, taxes, and heat. And what we're trying to do is find a percentage of your gross income that this equals. So principal and interest is, is effectively your payment. So whatever your payment is plus taxes and heat. A good rule of thumb is that GDS should not exceed 35%. Now, yes, there's exceptions to this, but that's a good baseline if you're trying to figure a rough equivalent of what you can afford. Total debt service, on the other hand, includes not only principal interest, taxes, and heat, but also any other debt payments or obligations. Now, not everything is included in there, and we'll get to that later, but all debt payments. A good rule of thumb is that TDS should not exceed 42%. Exceptions up to 44% and beyond are available depending on someone's credit score and the particular program that we're using and applying for. Of course, the amount of down payment you have also plays into this, so it's important to know exactly what rule you're working with before you go in and apply for something. So let's go through GDS. We'll actually look at how to calculate it. This is a scenario, the common scenario that we re receive. Someone has a new mortgage payment that will work out to $2,500 a month. And that couple makes $120,000 a year combined, both of their jobs, so $10,000 a month. Property taxes are $3,600 per year. That works out to $300 per month. And heat is $100 at most lenders. Uh, there's a few that will use $85, some that will use less if it's a condo, but it's, it's a, not a big difference, and $100 uh, should be used for roundness. Strata fees that on the townhouse they're buying are $330 per month. Now, currently, banks only use 50% of the strata fees to count towards GDS and TDS. So you have to remember that when you're working through it. If it is a strata property, meaning an apartment, townhouse, condo, something like that, and there are fees, then only 50% of those are used. So here's the calculation. You get a $2,500 payment plus 300 taxes plus 100 heat and $165 strata fees equals $3,065. $3,065 divided by the $10,000 monthly income as expressed as a percentage is 30.65 gross debt service or GDS, which is within my 35% guideline I gave you. So based on GDS, yes, this would be approved. TDS is a little bit different, similar but different. Same scenario, same payments and all that. The only difference is that last line there says the client has a $300 per month car payment and owes $8,000 in credit card debt. So here's the calculation. Now I want to note here, for credit cards, most banks use 3% of the amount owing to determine what your payment will be. So in this case, 8,000, 3%, $240 will count towards TDS per month. You'll notice I like to convert everything to monthly numbers because that tends to be how most people run their budgets, so it's how I do my math. $2,500 mortgage payment plus $300 taxes, $100 heat, $165 strata fees, plus the $300 car payment, and $240 equals $3,605 per month, counted towards their $10,000 income, 3,605 divided by 10,000 equals 36.05% TDS, total debt service. Again, it's within my range of 42 that I gave you. So the two ratios to keep in mind are GDS and TDS, 35, 42 respectively. There are exceptions, but for now, those are important. A couple of notes on TDS. People often say to me, well, wait, if I've got monthly bills, what about my cable bill or my cell phone bill? No. Cable bills, cell phone bills, telephone or internet bills are not included. Other things not included are monthly RSP contributions, but the loans are car insurance, house insurance, repairs and maintenance of the property, and income taxes. Now you may say, well, wait, a lot of those really important expenses, things that I have to pay for. But that's why we only use 42 or 44% of the TDS calculations. The other 56 to 58% are for those other expenses that everybody else faces. Some things that must be included in TDS and that often people wish were not, child support payments, alimony or spousal support payments, any other loan, credit card, line of credit, or monthly debt obligation, car lease payments. If, if you're making them out of your own account, they're your payment, they count towards TDS. Now, it's a lot of numbers. If you have any questions, feel free to give me a call. I'm happy to run through your situation for free. Everybody's is different, and it takes some experience to know what numbers actually have to be included and what are not included. So again, for the Mortgage Center, I'm Rowan Smith.